Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis, and this is The Daily Brief. So let's start here with 850 Russians off the battlefield, 23 tanks, 45 combat vehicles, and 71 vehicles and fuel tanks. So it's still hot on the front lines. Last night, Ukrainian drones reportedly struck a Russian military aviation center in Voronezh. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, with Ukrainian defense source confirming the successful operation. We see this in the Euromaidan press. Last night, Ukrainian drones reportedly struck this uh, aviation training center, and it was a little sketchy trying to understand what they hit at first, but I think I understand it now. According to the reports, two drones exploded on the premises of the military aviation training center, damaging the building's facade and windows, which didn't seem like much, but that's because of the way that this was reported. This was a little bit better. Ukraine says it struck aviation center in Verona's. And then when you get into it, we will not disclose the details, but according to preliminary information, the main production facilities of the enterprise were damaged. Now, this was a military training center. The, the real interesting thing was it got past whatever defenses, air defense or other things, and it's not one that has been struck before, to my understanding. Here's uh, Anton Goroshenko reporting, St. Javelin reporting, and a number of others, Igor Shushko. Uh, so this was kind of a big deal. Where was it? Verona's is over here. So it's a pretty good ways up from, you know, above Belgorod and uh, Kharkiv. And yeah, so it, it was a big deal. Okay, moving along. This was a bigger deal. So, Serpukov, a Russian missile ship, has been put out of order by a fire on April 7 in Kaliningrad, region of Russia. Due to the fire inside the missile ship, its communications and automated automation equipment were completely destroyed. Restoring its combat capability will require a long time. So, let's look at where this is. If we zoom out, we recognize that this is that little enclave of Russia that's between Lithuania and Poland, and <laughs> nothing has been attacked there. It's on the Baltic Sea, not on the Black Sea. And so let's zoom in, and it's on this little island here just off of Kaliningrad proper. Now, the history of Kaliningrad was that after World War II, it was a German enclave, and Lithuania said, well, there's no Lithuanians there, and Poland said it's not really Pol uh, Poles there, so uh, Russia took it. And But that's a long way from Ukraine, from here to here. It'll be really mind-numbing when Ukraine strikes somewhere on the east coast of Russia. In a post on X, formerly Twitter, Ukrainian military intelligence said a fire inside the Serpukov missile corvette had completely destroyed its means of communication. Probably a careless cigarette, but you know how that goes. Ukraine has hit nearly two dozen Russian warships and other Russian vessels in the Black Sea since Moscow launched its full-scale invasion. Now, I'm showing you this article to show you what I'm about to show you next. This is destroyed in the, like, orange-red and damaged in the yellow. March 22, this is what happened. One destroyed, two kind of injured or wounded, damaged ships. In April 22, the Moskva, and then four small patrol boats, three of those were sunk and one was damaged. Again, destroyed is the orange. And then uh, June, there was one destroyed. July, one destroyed. October, one damaged. August 2023, one damaged. September 2023, it looks like destroyed. Uh, another damaged. November 2023, three damaged. Uh, December 2023, destroyed. February 2024, two destroyed. March 2024, three damaged. We don't know ex the extent of these with the Azov and the Yamal just about a uh, little less than a few weeks ago. Um, but wow. I mean, just, just wow. This is from a country with no navy. And now they're hitting in the Baltic Sea, not just the Black Sea. Just a little bit more long time needed to repair the Russian vessel after a fire, Ukraine says. The Russian missile ship, which was reportedly set on fire, will be difficult to repair under sanctions pressure. So think about that. It's not just the repair time itself. It's getting the parts. And how do you get the parts if the sanctions preclude that? 
if it's communications, automation systems, then the ship requires repairs. When such ships were being built, it was no secret that, just like in airplanes, there were few Russian parts in them except for cables, metal, and crew. So they built this with Western parts that there are now sanctions on, and that's going to be kind of difficult. Not impossible, but difficult to repair and get back in place. A few other stories here. There's some pretty incredible things that happened last night. Heimers hit a gas station with dozens of cataracts in Herzon region. So it's just a gas station, run-of-the-mill gas station, but it hit a number of soldiers in the process. The European Union has sent emergency aid to Ukraine in the form of 167 generators following the Russian attacks on its energy infrastructure. Russia seems intent on destroying the energy infrastructure in Ukraine, and this is one at least temporary solution to tide them over in the meantime. Jay and Kiev put this out, and I thought this was a really interesting point because this is exactly what we're looking at. As the population flees west, Russians have turned their attention to completely destroying the town of Chasovyar with missiles and guided bombs. And that's what they do. They don't try to take a city, they try to completely eliminate it. Once there's nothing left, Russians will call it Russia. That's the way that they operate it's it's a scorched earth policy it's just if you can if i can't have it neither can you okay russians accidentally dropped a 1500 kilogram aerial bomb on a grocery store in russian occupied donetsk it did not detonate surprisingly these are normal targeting apartment buildings full of sleeping families in other areas of Ukraine, like the kind of thing that almost happened here to the territory that they claim is Russia, is the kind of thing that they target in Ukraine regularly. Russian incompetence saves lives. Next. Okay, I, I saw this, this was also Jay and Kiev, and I thought, you know, there's something that has really shifted in France, and it's, it's a good shift, and I uh, the French foreign minister said this, It's not in our interest to speak with Russian officials because the communiques that are issued and the messages that are conveyed are lies. Like, they're getting the message now that Russia can't be trusted, that they lie, that they're just going to keep doing these kinds of things. Okay, along those same lines, former Representative Ken Buck from Colorado is now calling out Marjorie Taylor Greene as Moscow Marjorie. Moscow Marjorie is focused on getting her talking points from the Kremlin. <laughs> so there's kind of a revolt here where they're actually saying things that they hadn't been saying before. The Democrats might have called her that, but for members of her own party to be doing that, that's a shift as well. Finally, this is the last story. There's no Russian misinformation on X, formerly Twitter, but Western influence ops are present, according to Elon Musk. You wouldn't believe me if I didn't show you the actual article. The owner of X, formerly Twitter, Elon Musk, has rejected the accusations that Russian misinformation was widespread on his platform. Now, everyone knows that. Scholarly research has proven that. And we also know that misinformation on Twitter actually spreads further and faster than truth. The entrepreneur, who describes himself as a champion of free speech, has been accused of making the social network vulnerable to Russian activities. Well, now I'm a free speech guy myself, and I, I'm an advocate of free speech, but how to clamp down on bots and trolls and misinformation while preserving free speech is a really difficult trick. But he doesn't seem to be at all interested even in that component. He doesn't think that there's anything nefarious going on. We don't see a lot of Russian activity, to be frank, on the system. We see very little, Musk responded. We do see a lot of attempts to influence things, but they seem to be coming from the West, not Russia. Of course, Russia was loving that and repeated that in RT. Hey, I want to put in a plug. I just did an interview with Arthur. It's coming up at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If you're a fan of Arthur's, you're going to want to see that. And if you don't know who this is, you're going to want to see that. Okay, that's all that I have for today. Thank you for listening to this. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, and the coffees. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.